America's most exclusive group of warriors, returned to Knoxville this week. Those Medal of Honor recipients have earned the military's highest and rarest award for valor. Our coverage this week will highlight those American heroes, including 14 from East Tennessee. But first, a look at the origins of the medal itself. Here's 10 News anchor John Becker. It was an incredible undertaking. A one-of-a-kind documentary sits in its final stages at a Knoxville production house. As I knew the story was going to be a, a monster sort of to tell, we ended up spending a year and a half doing this and collecting information from America, Europe, Asia. Journalist, author, and now filmmaker Ed Hooper leads a team of five tackling a story that has never been shared until now. And we thought it would be great as our legacy project to create an hour-long documentary on the history of the Medal of Honor itself, how it came into being, why it is the nation's highest honor. Millions have served in the military, but just a fraction, fewer than 3,500 veterans, have received the gold medal with the powder blue ribbon, America's highest award for valor in combat. It's a very rare award for a very good reason. The stories of battlefield heroics and self-sacrifice among Medal of Honor recipients are preserved in books, etched in stone, and recounted in movies. It's more than punching out a coin. For this documentary, Knoxville filmmakers won rare access to a Nevada mint that forges these medals. Their lineage dates back to the Civil War, President Lincoln and designer William Wilson. Finding a, the photograph of, of William Wilson or the silversmithing firm in Philadelphia that produced it, it didn't exist as far as anybody knew. And I guess we were, Lord, we were on that for three months before we finally came up with it. The lady that was helping was as fascinated with it as I was because she said, this is him. And she flipped it over to me and I'm like, well, I'll be, that, that's what I needed. That find came from a visit to an independent research library in Philadelphia. And new discoveries took this team far beyond their East Tennessee studio. The second discovery would be probably the purge of 1917. That's the Great Army Purge where 911 Medals of Honor were taken away. The medal was cleaned up and more or less positioned to become what it is today. History books record that defining era when the medal was stripped from veterans who didn't deserve it. The list includes a regiment in Maine awarded the medal just for re-enlisting. Lincoln's funeral guard accepted the medal for simply standing by his casket. So we wanted to see what was the process that took him away in the first place. The exhaustive hunt for proof of the process led Hooper and his team to the National Archives in Washington, D.C., conjuring this memorable ending to an Indiana Jones movie showing the government shelves where the nation's treasures go to disappear. Down on the bottom shelf was just two big boxes, and in those boxes were the Purge of 1917 documents, and we were just sort of like, wow, now we've got you know, the documentation to sit there and show that this is what happened, you know, that it was a fair and uh, it was a fair purge. The East Tennessee connections to the medal run deep. George Gillespie from Kingston designed the modern medal, a medal made famous through a national newspaper story recounting the courageous battlefield charge by World War I soldier and Pall Mall, Tennessee native Alvin C. York. So what we did was we started looking for the Saturday Evening Post. And we actually found a, a copy of it that we got for this documentary. And so when the story of Alvin York came out, it put a face on the Medal of Honor that had never been before. Hooper calls this documentary an undertaking, one he has spent a career preparing to produce, taking him places he never expected. The idea that government and museums and universities preserve our history. They don't. The one thing I've learned doing this, and, and I've learned doing documentaries over the years, period, is it's the people who do. It's these families who do. The fact of the matter is, 90% of this documentary is things, you know, that nobody's ever seen before. And this lesson in history, unlike many of its pieces, won't be tucked away. Producers hope this documentary is seen in classrooms across the country.